good morning now. Before I continue, please allow me to give you a disclaimer. I am a Sunday school teacher. So if you see some uncommon strength, just understand. Teaching kids and teaching their parents is not the same thing. It is the same thing. And by God's grace, we have managed, uh, by the blessing of our visioner, Pastor Kaunda, we have managed to get that strength. You can even do a star jump up or juke to emphasize the point. Otherwise, I'm not So please, uh, just understand my energy in case it becomes too much. So my name is Samuel Ajo Victor, and this morning I am grateful to be here. It is only by the grace of God, only by his mercies. Uh, I did not write any application anywhere, but God sees everything. And so this morning I am grateful even to be standing on this stage a place where the past week powerful men and women of God have had a privilege to stand. Honestly, if I had a choice, I would have chosen to be down there, not up here. But I thank you so much, Mom and Dad, Bishop Kimani. Thank you so much for the wonderful direction you're taking us. And if you are there and you share the same sentiments with me, that surely our Mom and Dad are leading us in this right direction, you can give them a clap. If you are sure. If you are not sure, it is permitted. We can explain to you afterwards which direction we are taking. But if you are sure, thank you so much for that. So, today I wanted to talk on a very, very sensitive topic. Not so much sensitive, but it is kind of sensitive. Because it, it affects all of us. All of us are affected in one way or another. And by God's grace, we, we shall share about it. We'll have some long readings. So to support our jokes, Mingi Sana, it is because of the long readings that we'll have to cover. So please, bear with me. Just a small request. Uh, Mom, help me with the paper. Io, thank you. Thank you so much. Unless I deviate. I don't want to deviate. So yes, we can start. Let's start from Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. We can start from there so that we can see to Neanda Wapi. Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. So if I had a mark, I would have highlighted as long as, as long as the earth exists. That is, as long as you and me and your neighbor are on earth, we are sure that there will be planting and harvest. We are sure. Regardless of what happens, there will be planting and harvest. Number two, there will be cold and there will be heat. Number three, there will be summer and winter. And number three, number four, there will be day and night. So these things are certain for anyone and everyone who is on earth. Thank you, media team. So the, the topic of my sharing today is times and seasons. Times and seasons. And I found it good to start from that point. Because it shows us one thing, that as surely as you are, you are subject to times and seasons. You are subject to it. You cannot change it. It's you to position yourself to it. Because they will surely come. Times and seasons will come. When I was not so young, but when I was young and I used to sit in the old sanctuary, thank God we're in a new cathedral. I used to sit behind the bishop and my good friends, Pastor Brian and the rest, they used to call it the Bishop Square. And when I was sitting behind the Bishop Square, I would always hear the Bishop say these words. You're either coming out of a storm, you're either about to get into one, or you're either into one. And he would emphasize, you're either in these three. You're either about to get into one, you're in one, or you're coming out of one. And here right now, Genesis is telling us that times and seasons, as long as you're on earth, they are there. You cannot evade them. They are there. So if you're writing notes, you can write based on that verse. Two points. Number one, time and season changes are inevitable. You cannot avoid them. There's no way you can run to say, hey, mapana, mimi pa hi plantings. You cannot. They are inevitable. Number two, the actions in one season avoid the outcomes of another season. That's why there's a planting and harvest. Now, if you, if you don't plant, 
I assure you the harvest time will come. But your actions during the planting will affect your behavior in the harvest. So number one, they are inevitable. Number two, your actions in one determine the outcome in another. Very key. So after that, praise and worship team, not praise and worship, media team, kindly. Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 16. I want us to see something also here. Therefore, see that you walk carefully. What does carefully render here? That is living life with honor, with purpose and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. Not as the unwise, but as wise. Who are the wise here? These are the sensible, intelligent, discerning people. Making the very most of your time. Number one on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. And I really love that verse because it, it, God is now advising us, father to son, therefore, be very careful. Be very careful. We were once sharing with the young professionals and I remember God telling us this very carefully. And the, the, our strength was this verse, be very careful. And Paul gives us one example, is that because the days are evil. Now, it is one thing if I told you the days are evil, but if God tells you the days are evil, <laughs> I assure you, the days are evil. There is nothing to add to it, because God is the one who tells us, be very careful. Why? Because the days are evil. Number, the second reason is this. Jesus tells his disciples, I am sending you as sheep among wolves. That alone gives us a very gloomy day. That you are very disadvantaged by default. By default you are disadvantaged. You are a sheep among wolves. Those of us who like Nat Geo, they can give you a testimony of what the wolves do to the sheep. Under normal circumstances, under factory settings, the sheep devours the wolves. And Christ Jesus is now giving us the gospel truth. I am sending you a sheep among wolves. In short, by default, you are disadvantaged. Unless, unless God provides another route out, the sheep will finish us. That one I can tell you for sure. The wolves will finish us. But thank God, Christ gives us a way out. And he says, be wise. And number two, be humble as a dove. Be wise. The same thing is being accorded by Paul. Be wise. Why? Because the days are evil. Make the most of every opportunity. My goodness. Every opportunity. Which shows there will be an opportunity. The opportunity coming is not you or my prerogative. It is God's prerogative. Mine and yours is just to make the most of every opportunity. The opportunity has not come. Don't worry. Thank God. It is coming. It is coming. Just the way day and night are sure to come. Then, the seasons of opportunity are also sure to come. You just prepare yourself. And we shall look at an example of someone who did that. And we will learn from what he did. So, kindly, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 41. It's a very long it's a very long reading, but by God's grace, I'm sure we shall learn something from there. So I will request us, please, don't get, don't get weary as we read these verses. So we'll read from verse 1 to 24, and I, I will read, in case I make a mistake somewhere, just correct. Just correct. So two full years later, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of the Nile River. In his dream, he saw seven fat, healthy cows come up out of the river and begin grazing in the marsh grass. Then he saw seven more cows come up behind them from the Nile, but these were scrawny and thin. These cows stood beside the fat cows on the river bank. Then the scrawny thin cows ate the seven healthy fat cows. At this point in the dream, Pharaoh woke up, but he fell asleep again and had a second dream. This time he saw seven heads of grain, plump and beautiful, growing on a single stalk. Then seven more heads of grain appeared, but these were shriveled and withered by the east wind. 
And this tin had swallowed up the seven plump, well-formed heads. Then Pharaoh woke up again and realized it was a dream. The next morning, Pharaoh was very disturbed by the dream. So he called for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. When Pharaoh told them his dreams, not one of them could tell him what they meant. Finally, the king's chief cupbearer spoke up. Today I have been reminded of my failure, he told Pharaoh. Some time ago you were angry with the chief baker and me, and you imprisoned us in the palace of the captain of the guard. One night the chief baker and I each had a dream, and each dream had its own meaning. There was a young Hebrew man with us in the prison, who was a slave of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he told us what each of our dreams meant. And everything happened just as he had predicted. I was restored to my position as cupbearer, and the chief baker was executed and impaled on a pole. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once, and he was quickly brought from the prison. After he shaved and changed his clothes, he went in and stood before Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night, and no one here can tell me what it means. But I have heard that when you hear about a dream, you can interpret it. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied. But God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. So Pharaoh told Joseph his dream. In my dream, he said, I was standing on the bank of the river Nile, and I saw seven fat, healthy cows come up out of the river and begin grazing in the marsh grass. But then I saw seven slick-looking cows, scrawny and thin, come up after them. I have never seen such sorry-looking animals in all the land of Egypt. These thin, scrawny cows ate the seven fat cows. But afterward, you wouldn't have known it, for they were still as thin and scrawny as before. Then I woke up. Then I fell asleep again, and I had another dream. This time, I saw seven heads of grain, full and beautiful, growing on a single stalk. Then seven more heads of grain appeared, but these were blighted, shriveled, and withered by the east wind. And the shriveled heads swallowed the seven healthy heads. I told these dreams to the magicians, but no one could tell me what they mean. Thank you so much. We'll continue from there. So I want us to take note of one thing. And this one I've had to learn, the, the, let me not say the hard way, but I've had to learn it somewhat. Because teaching Sunday school has exposed me to an audience that uh, the foundations in spirituality are not as strong as the ones that this audience has. So be thankful to God you have a strong foundation in God. Teaching Sunday school, even a small thing as salvation, you can spend almost a whole month because they need to understand. Not to hear, to understand. Because this is not a storybook. They are used to stories. You are not telling them a story. Telling them that you're not a storyteller is not helping. You need to show and to prove them that you are not. And so one of the things I've come to learn is this. That if you're not careful, you can miss the story behind the story. You can just concentrate on the face value. And you're like, wow, seven fat and healthy cows, seven thin cows. The thin ones swallowed the fat ones. What a good story. God is so creative. My brother, my sister, you are very wrong. You are very, very, very wrong. And one thing God has come to teach us is this. If you're not careful, you may end up giving them a lot of stories, but miss the mark. Miss the mark. And this was the example God used on me. You have taught them countless times that David used a stone to kill Goliath. When the truth of the matter is, judgment had already been proclaimed over Goliath. Whether David threw a paper, paper plane or rain just hit him, he would have died because already he had been proclaimed dead. David says, this day, this day, today, the Lord shall surely deliver you into my hands. That is when Goliath died. It had nothing to do with the stone. But if you miss it, that child will go knowing a stone killed Goliath. Now the foundations have been messed up with. And so this is another story that if you are not so careful, we will miss the point. So let's look at it clear. Pharaoh is not a small man by any means, especially in this context. Because during that time, Egypt was the mightiest superpower on the land. 
Wao walikuwa wakusema it was them they were the US of that time or probably the China depending on what you ascribe to. They were the mightiest on the land and Pharaoh was very intelligent. I will tell you Pharaoh was intelligent. Look at how he surrounded himself with wise people and then with magicians as wrong as it sounds at least he always sought out to know the truth. He sought out whether he would use the wise men or the magicians he made sure he knew the truth. And this is a good example of Pharaoh's wisdom. He has a dream. Actually he has two dreams. He wakes up. He doesn't just wish them away. He doesn't assume. I am so sure myself included if I had this kind of dream. Thin cows eating fat cows. I'll wake up and just go go on with my business thinking that probably uh, I watched a good movie the other night that affected my conscience. Because you'll, you'll be thinking, thin cows, fat cows. Okay, God doesn't speak with this. Probably I expected the Holy Spirit falling on me at night so that I can walk, wake up and start looking for the man of God. Hey, I had this dream. What is God communicating? But look at this scenario. Pharaoh has this dream and his intelligence and wisdom tells him, go find out what this dream means. Because it is not normal. It is not normal. And he tries his best. Nothing happens. His sources of anchor fail him. And that is one lesson for us. Be careful. Your sources of anchor may fail once. If it is not Christ Jesus, you, you can be so sure once or one time they will fail you. So Pharaoh is in that place. The wise men, no one knows everything, anything. The magicians, no one knows anything. Then the cupbearer remembered something. That once he was in a case, a conflict, a serious one with the baker. And he had a dream. And Joseph interpreted for him the dream. And one thing Joseph told the cupbearer was this. When you go to the king's palace, don't forget me. I'm telling you, the cupbearer forgot. He terribly forgot. And we're in another opportunity now. Whereby God now gives a dream to Pharaoh. I want you to notice this. That once God gave a dream to the cupbearer. And the dream was not just aimed at saving the life of the cupbearer. But it was also aimed at lifting Joseph up. But the cupbearer failed. Now God had to go to now the man in the point of influence. So that in the course of interpreting the dream, Joseph can be lifted up. God cannot forget you. Just because the first source or the first point of help failed, you don't worry. You don't worry. He will go to another source to make sure that you are lifted up in the end. So back to our story. Pharaoh is by the river Nile. He's standing. Seven fat cows, fat and healthy. KJV says very well favored. Well favored cows come out. And then they become grazing, grazing on the marsh, marsh fields. I, I went and googled marsh and I just, I was looking for the image, not even the meaning, because I want to see what marsh looks like. And marsh is the kind of grass that grows probably in a swampy area. Very healthy grass, very green. So those were the grass that the seven healthy cows came and started grazing at. I would like you to imagine, picture this with me. And then no sooner than we had seven thin, scrawny, uh, the King James calls them ill favored. They came and they swallowed the seven fat and healthy cows. Again, not again, Pharaoh woke up. Pharaoh woke up. Then he went to sleep again. Again, the Lord comes, gives him another dream. Seven heads of wheat, very healthy, grew up on a stalk. Very quickly, they just sprouted and grew up. And then other seven, very thin, grew up and swallowed up the healthy ones. And now Pharaoh is troubled because he doesn't know what it means. Joseph is called. And the first thing Joseph tells Pharaoh is this. Pharaoh, you just had one dream. Both of them, they just mean the same thing. And I'm reminded of one, one, one quote I've seen on people's WhatsApp status 
Very awesome. Bishop J.B. Masinde. The Lord does not repeat a thing because he's idol. He doesn't repeat a thing because he's idol. There is an emphasis. And Pharaoh somehow knows that there is an emphasis. So Joseph now starts interpreting the dream. But before we go to the Joseph's interpretation, I want us to see something. I want us to note something. Number one, we have seven thin cows that swallowed seven fat cows. Pause there. Pause there. Just look at me. Pause there. Let me ask you a question. A cow has an option of healthy grass and another cow. What will the cow eat? Let's just be realistic. Those of us who have never seen a cow, just look at your neighbor. They'll give you the answer by their reaction. You will see them laughing. That gives you a very strong answer. The cow will eat the what? The grass. What business does a cow have with eating another cow? That is point number one. Put a star there. We are going somewhere. Put a star. Number two. This is what Pharaoh told Joseph. That the cows, the seven ugly thin cows that ate the fat ones, they did not change in size. They did not change in... That is scary. Because those of us who have kept cows, there is a way we know if they are full or not. You look at the belly. Because if they eat grass, the belly will, it will show the outcome. Now these cows have just eaten seven fat and healthy cows and nothing has changed. Those two points already tell us something. This dream is not about cows. It is not about cows. If you're looking to, at the interpretation from the point of cows, you have lost it. It is not about cows. And that taught me that, hey, Samuel, any time you have a dream and you try to interpret it from the object, ah, you lost. You lost. So you have a dream, probably you see cows or goats, and <laughs> you wake up thinking it's about the goats. My dear, hey, unapotea, unapotea. Trust God for interpretation. So this is an example of such a case. We are not talking about cows. We are not talking about cows. So God is not telling us about cows. It's something else, not cows, totally. So there must be something then. The question is, what are we talking about? Mediate, let's go on now from verse 25. Let's go on. Let's see what we are talking about. Genesis 41 from verse 25 now. Joseph responded, both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh in advance what he is about to. Thank you so much. The seven healthy cows and the, se the seven healthy cows and the seven healthy heads of grain both represent seven years of prosperity. The seven thin scrawny cows that came up later and the seven thin heads of grain withered by the east wind represent seven years of famine. This will happen just as I have described it. For God has revealed to Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The next seven years will be a period of great prosperity throughout the land of Egypt. But afterward, there will be seven years of famine so great that all the prosperity will be forgotten in Egypt. Famine will destroy the land. This famine will be so severe that even the memory of the good years will be erased. As for having two similar dreams, it means that these events have been decreed by God and he will soon make them happen. That is just for me, I thank God for the last verse. That is, that is good drama that when God gives you a dream twice, it shows you something. It has been decreed by God and it will happen. So now Joseph is giving us a very good picture of what is going on. We are not looking at cows, please. If you are still in the cows, cross, cross over the other side. Tusha pita ngombe. Now we are looking at this. The seven fat and healthy. These are years of prosperity. Years of prosperity. The seven thin and scrawny, ill-favored. These are years of famine. These are years of famine. We are looking at Pharaoh's dream. So God is revealing to Pharaoh that a time is about to come. You will have years of prosperity. And after that, what will follow is years of famine. 
years of prosperity and years of famine. Now, the scary part is this. The years of famine have a certain ability that is not normal. They can eat up all the goodness from the years of prosperity. Totally. Eat up all of it. Finish it out. And Joseph is telling Pharaoh, now, hey, God has decreed it and it shall surely come. Looking at this scripture or this portion of story, God told me something that this is not just Pharaoh's dream. This is your dream, this is my dream. There will be times of prosperity, times of advantage, and there will be times of famine. Not necessarily famine, there is no rain, but there will be times of hardness. There will be times of difficulty. And all of us here are a testimony that that is true. There will be time when things just work out. Because of the law of times and seasons, and because God is the one who brings the opportunity, there will be times when opportunities will be there. Surely, they will be there. But there will be times when these opportunities will not be there. And Pharaoh now, as the king, because he represented the head of the government of the earth, at that time, he is being given this truth, that there will be times of famine, and there will be times of prosperity. Put your house in order. So the times of prosperity for us, they will be there. Remember we started by saying what? You're either getting out of a storm, you're either in one, or you're either about to go into one. The changes will happen. There will be time you're in one. There will be time you're about to get into one. There will be time you'll be coming out of one. As long as you are on earth, that is the cycle of things. And Joseph is advising Pharaoh that be careful what you do during the times of prosperity. Because during the times of prosperity, it, 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 it means that things are just working out very well, smoothly. Let's take a good example. The seven fat cows came out of the river. Notice, they came out fat and healthy. It is not the grass that made them fat and healthy. Scripture says they came out fat and healthy out of the river. The second point, they just found marsh lands. Well planted, well watered grass. They had nothing to do with it. They just found it there. Things are working. Hey, things are working. You need a time, you have a testimony and you say, I don't know how. But things are working. Times of prosperity. Things are working. Times of advantage. Things are working. Opportunities left, right, and center. They are working. But lo and behold, the times of famine come up. Once again, the seven thin and scrawny looking cows, ugly, they came thin and ugly. Things will be difficult. I assure you, they will be difficult. Things will be difficult. Left, right, and center, back on Ashindo, what is the problem? Things are difficult. Not that you're not trying, but they're difficult. The thin cows even go to the point of eating the seven fat cows, but still they do not change in stature. Zinabaki to evil. So there'll be times of ease. And then there'll be times of difficulty. As long as you're on earth, there'll be times of ease. And there'll be times of difficulty. Where is your anchor? That is a question only you can answer. How are you utilizing your opportunities? That is a question only you and I can answer. But I'd like us to go forward. So the famine comes after the good times. I don't know why. Even when you just go into a very random setup and ask a people, ask people, I have good and bad news. Which should I start with? A very good chunk of them always say start with a good one. This is the instance we have. The healthy time comes, and then after that the famine comes. And God gives a very brilliant disclaimer that when the famine comes, it destroys everything on the land. It even destroys the gains that had been made during the good times. And that opened my eyes. It opened my eyes, and 
I came to realize that one of the greatest reasons of regret, especially in the house of faith, is when you're in a position where the hard times are hitting you so hardly. That is the great, because the question becomes, I have served God all this long. Why is he overlooking me? That is one of the greatest regrets. It almost pulled me from church myself. Because you're wondering, hey, nimetumikia mungu sana. I've been there, left, right, and center, doing everything, giving myself. Eh? God uses those who are available. I have been available. Faithful, I have been faithful. Trustworthy, I have been trustworthy. But nothing seems to work out. What is the problem? And at that time, you fail to realize that there were points of opportunity that passed you. Or that you did not make the most of. So it is very serious that these seven very ugly consume all the gains of the good time. How many times have we seen on TV very brilliant, let me use this example, very brilliant politicians from long time. Very good opportunities right now. They have nothing. You wonder what happened. Athletes, the guy was a gold medalist somewhere. Ran the whole world, look at them at that time. At this time, you look at their life and you're wondering, what happened? What happened? The seven thin cows consumed the seven healthy cows. Totally consumed it. Nothing to show. And it's a very painful time. And here God is trying to preserve probably preserve Pharaoh's reign. That King Pharaoh, if you don't take care, this famine time will really do away with all your gains. The world will forget there was a Pharaoh because of this thin and ill looking cows. They will consume everything. So for you and me, it's us to ask ourselves a very serious question. If, a very big if, you are in the healthy cows, If you are in the healthy cows, be very careful. The thin cows are coming. You be very careful. The thin cows are coming. There's a time I was in the healthy cows. There's a time I was in school. Everything was coming. You are being given pocket money. You have an issue, you just run and go complain. And it is sorted out. It's only a call that provided all the solutions. But time has changed. Because as long as you're on earth, times and seasons will change. Right now, you have to look at yourself. Anything happens, you have to somehow get the solution from yourself. If I had not used that time wisely, then right now, I will surely pay. I will surely pay. I teach class 8, and this is what I tell them. Right now, those of you who are privileged, you're not in boarding school. Use that time wisely with your parents. Because a time will come. Surely a time will come. And you cannot pray against it. You will be in a boarding unless parliament changes that system. You won't have your parents all the time. You will have your teachers. So use this time wisely. Use this time wisely. Not just wisely to play with friends. Make all contact communication with your parents. Totally. Make it. For some of us, God is so gracious. Our parents are alive. Our grandparents are alive. Make the most of that opportunity. Make the most of it. It's a wake-up call. Because surely, as sad and painful as it is, the will of life will change. It will change. And a time will come, they will not be there. It will surely change. So it's for you to make the most of every opportunity. It is for you to make the most of every opportunity. And this is, the, this is the kind of wisdom that now God is granting, not just Pharaoh, but you and me. That by his gracious mercies, there will be times of ease. There will be a time you will apply for that job and you will get it. There will be a time you will start that business and it will work out. It will. But there will be a time it may not work out. There will be a time 
those of us who have been in the employment world, you will be shown the door. Just the way you are shown the door to enter. There will be a time. That, is, that doesn't mean the devil is on your case. No, 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 no. Here's the secret we have here. Times and seasons change. That is a secret. It doesn't mean the devil is working against you. No. Times and seasons change. And just, I want us to look at briefly what Pharaoh asks, what Joseph asks Pharaoh to do. And Joseph tells Pharaoh, because this thing has been decreed and it will surely come, you do this. During the time of ease, save. From every harvest, save. In every region, save. Because there is something you can do during the times of opportunity that can carry you through the times of disadvantage. There is something you can do. God hasn't left us totally disadvantaged. No. He has left us with intelligence and wisdom. There is something you can do. For those of us who, sell, who, who go about selling insurance and encouraging people to take insurance, you can thank me later. I have helped you. There is something you can do with the time of ease that when the seven ugly cows come, you will be safe. There is something you can do. Probably this is the time for you to build your capacity with God. You have just come out of a storm, but you have the wisdom and knowledge to know that another one will come. Now, during this time of ease, because there is no storm, build your capacity in God. Pray. Fast. I repeat again. Pray. Fast. Visit as many men of God and women of God as possible. Learn as much as possible. Because at that time, your mind is only focused on one thing. That is your benefits and gains from the storm. But you're about to get into one. So build your capacity. Financially, save. You will not be employed forever. Save. 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 The wisdom of God upon Joseph told Pharaoh to save. Don't just consume everything. No. No. No, 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 no. Save. Build capacity. Use your time in the right places. Because when the times of difficulty come, you may not have all that time to go talk to the man of God. You may not have all that opportunity to pray and fast. You may not. So during the time of opportunity, do your best. That is the time now to gain. Buy books. Read. Know a lot. Know about it. Because some things will happen and times will change. And two reasons that, not all the reasons, but the two reasons I, that I found that probably make the time of famine difficult. One of them is age. You will age. I, I will age. It's not always we'll have this strength. My youth brethren are here. One day, you will age. Look at the man right to you or in front of you. One time, they were probably even much more leaner, more, hey, 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 you know those words. Just look at them. One time, they were faster than you. They were jumpy, more jumpy than you. Yes. Look at mama in front of you or to your side. One time, one time, they were as young as you. One time, they were as young as you. Don't look at, you know, the problem is we want to look at examples elsewhere. Well, they are just seated here with us. <laughs> they are just seated here with us. They are just here. So one time, they were more agile than us. But look at them now. Times change. Times change. As hard as it is to believe. Times, if you don't make the best of it right now, if you don't run as much as you want right now, Pastor Brian, <laughs> one day, the man on your right, <laughs> you will not be able to run. <laughs> you will not be able to run. <laughs> you will not be able to run. Probably if they had consulted me and you, we would have told them to put some staircase here, not a ramp. But because of 
time they had to put a ramp. Because of time they had to put a ramp. Because time will change. Yes. Time will change. So if, if you don't do the right things right now, for those who are, are surrounding my generation, if you don't make the most of this time right now, you hey, the seven thin cows will literally handle you difficultly. Difficult. For some of us right now, we are in a point whereby we don't have children. You have all the time for God. One time God will bless you with a bouncing baby girl or baby boy, or even two of them. Now that child will not give you time to go pray. They will come and demand attention with you. And God will tell you, I gave you time. You didn't use it. Now, play with your child. Yes, you can leave the child crying. No, 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 no. You're going to talk to your father. He also wants to talk, he or she wants to talk to their father. Don't be unfair. Don't be unfair. God hates unjust balances. He hates them. So use this time now wisely. Use it wisely. Every one of us, you can attest that at a certain point in your life right now, there is a time of ease. You can attest to that. And if we are to be honest with God, there is a time of ease somewhere. You have your parents around. That is a time of ease. You have a job. That is a time of ease. You have a business. That is a time of ease. Use it wisely. Use it wisely. Make the most of it. Because a time will surely come. It will not be that way. It will not always be that way. Things will change. And so for one minute, I'd like us to just, just close your eyes and ask yourself this question. Are you maximizing the seasons of abundance? Are you maximizing the time of ease? When is the last time you approached our bishop and told him, just thank you? Because he is a very big reason why we have a time of ease right now. When is the, right, when is the last time you approached those of us who are married, your wife, and just told her thank you? When is the last time you approached your husband and told him, thank you? As children, sometimes we are problematic. But when is the last time you approached your child and told him, thank you? Youth, when is the last time you approached your parents and told them, thank you? Because a simple thank you shows how you are using your time of ease. And since the wisdom of God has come upon us, I will give you a minute to talk to your maker again. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you make the most, the most of the times of ease. That no opportunity will pass you. No opportunity will pass you. Totally no opportunity. And that you will know what to do and how to do it. Most gracious and loving Father, we thank you so much. That God, by your gracious mercies, we have times of ease. And Father, surely the wheel of life rotates and there will be times of difficulty. My God, may you grant us the wisdom to be able to to make the most of the time of ease. But Father God, we will honor those who need to be honored. We will respect those who need to be respected. We will obey those who need to be obeyed. We will save God, not just as an act of religiosity, but Father, from the intelligence that you have granted us this morning. We thank you, Father, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. I've had a good time and God bless you.